House of Representatives approves extension of budget 2023 implementation, new salaries for judiciary. House launches investigation into killing of 17 soldiers. And correspondent sheds light on administration of constituency projects. Hello and thanks for joining us on You and Your Reps. I am Victor as we welcome to the program. The House of Representatives has passed two bills to extend implementation year of the 2023 national budget and its supplementary component from March 31, 2024 to June 30, 2024. Now, the Green Chamber has also given judicial office holders in the country reasons to smile with the approval and passage into law of an act that prescribes new salaries, allowances and fringe benefits. To amend the appropriation act following president tinubu's request two bills seeking three months extension of implementation timeline of the 2023 budget and the supplementary component were passed looking at the cumbersome nature of our procurement act we do not allow the government to implement the budget within that delimited period so there is need for us to extend to june so that the budget will be implemented effectively for the good governance of nigeria and therefore, I approve clauses one to three, an explanatory memorandum and the long title of the bill. The House also passed into law the bill making judicial office holders to now be entitled to new salaries, allowances and fringe benefits prescribed in the Act. The salaries and allowances elevated to reflect changing economic realities take effect from 1st January 2024. Mr. Speaker, the last time the salaries and the benefits allowance of judicial officers were reviewed was 2007. Meaning, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Chairman, that they've been stagnant over this period of time. So I really want to commend Mr. President for forwarding this bill to the House. Prohibition of multiple allowances carried the third is monitoring compliance. Carried. Fourth is power of the president to vary the schedule to this act. Carried. Lawmakers equally passed the student loans access to higher education repeal and reenactment bill 2024. The bill, when signed into law, paves way for the establishment of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund that will disburse and recover loans to students for higher education, vocational training and skills acquisition. Lawmakers condemned what they call the abuse and proliferation of orphanage homes in the country. Turning orphanage into baby factories, where teenage girls are accommodated to produce babies, which are sold and used for rituals and other heinous activities. Mandate Committee on Women Affairs and Social Development to liaise with the Federal Minister of Health and Social Welfare, both to ensure standardization of orphanage homes and close those on the resource. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has called for thorough investigation into the killing of 17 soldiers ambushed while on a peace mission in Okwama community, Ugeli South local government area of Delta State. The lawmakers condemned the gruesome murder of the military officers, insisting that the perpetrators must be brought to justice. Honorable Jimmy Benson. Adopting a motion of urgent national importance by Representative Baba Jimmy Bensing, lawmakers described the killings of soldiers in Delta State as an affront not only on the military but the nation at large, saying that the perpetrators must be unmasked. Acts like this by the very people the Nigerian Armed Forces are meant to protect have the potential of demoralizing the military and affecting the war on insecurity and insurgency which has so far recorded some huge successes. And I appeal to our military in the face of this huge provocation to please uh, uh, observe some uh, international protocol and human and stop the uh, current burning going on in the community so that investigations can go on 
and the real culprits are apprehended and brought before uh, justice. The House received an executive bill from President Bola Tinubu seeking to provide new salaries and allowances for judicial office holders in the country. To end the prolonged stagnation in their remuneration and to reflect contemporary socio-economic realities. The bill will also ensure significant improvement in the welfare, capacity and independence of the judiciary. Meanwhile, a bill for an act to establish the Federal University of Solid Mineral Development, Michika Adamawa State, scaled second reading. will address this critical gap by providing a dedicated platform for education, research and innovation in the exploration and utilization of solid minerals. Adopting other motions, the House has mandated its Committee on Treaties, Protocols and Agreements to investigate an alleged trade deal between Nigeria and the United Kingdom, which allows UK lawyers to practice in Nigeria. While the deal seeks to foster collaboration between the film and media industries in the United Kingdom and Nigeria, it does not cater for the interests of Nigerian lawyers, as there are no such provisions of or opportunities for them to practice their trade in the United Kingdom. The sum of 1.28 trillion naira was approved and passed as the 2024 statutory budget of the FCT administration. In 2001, the Nigerian parliament introduced a program which is now an established tradition. It is the Zonal Intervention Fund, popularly known as Constituency Project. 24 years on, this fund appears to have received more criticism than any other National Assembly-initiated program. In this report, correspondent Ignatius Nkwo takes a look at the running of the Zonal Intervention Fund, also known as Constituency Project. Zonal Intervention Program, if you like, call it Constituency Project, one of the features of the Nigerian Parliament introduced at the return of Nigeria's democracy in the Fourth Republic. In the wisdom of the proponents of this concept, it will bring development closer to the people. Constituency project at inception has a clear-cut pattern of oppression. During the budget process, legislators identify projects to be established in their constituencies. This is supposed to be a product of need assessment involving the constituents. The arrangement is that the award of the contract, supervision and payment for such projects are carried out by a ministry, department or agency of government. It is expected that the legislators do not have any control over the funds and execution. But the thing is that the idea that people have about this is that the members are being given this money to put in their pocket. And that is the most unfortunate thing. We can only make people to start having faith in that constituency project when we were able to be imparting life with that which had been budgeted. Constituency project can arguably be described as the most controversial program of the National Assembly. At the inception of the program in 2001, each member is allocated 5 million naira as constituency fund, but at present it is well over 100 million. Some critics doubt if it is value for money that the constituents get. Constituency project is actually one of the projects, is actually one of the projects which we are certain of and which have direct impact on the life of the life of the people. There is always a ceiling. You will say that yes, this is my ceiling for budget. But my budget in, a, in, a, in, 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 in my constituency may be about electricity, but the requirement to the ordinary man is to dig, uh, to, to do wells, to do ordinary wells. On the 8th of November 2023, Budget, a civil society organization that tracks the implementation of constituency projects across the country, released its 2022 report where it revealed that out of 3,691 projects tracked in 22 states between August 2022 and August 2023, only 337 were completed. We have to get, you know, take lessons from countries like Kenya, as mentioned, where there are even uh, committees 
at the local constituency level responsible for, first of all, conducting needs assessment within the constituency and then making a request to a national body that will now release funds to that committee to implement those projects. What the lawmaker does is to pretend over an oversight to make sure that what is being implemented in the constituency is done effectively. Constituency project is a global practice across parliament but what differs is the management and implementation process. Elsewhere, the Nigerian Correctional Service has confirmed that 384 inmates who escaped during the last jail attack at Kujé Correctional Facility have so far been recaptured, with 502 still at large. Now, this was made known during an oversight visit to the Kujé Medium Security Custodial Centre by five house committees investigating the incident. The delegation was led by the Chairman House Committee on Reformatory Institution. We are here with the mandate of the House over the motion to investigate the escape on July 5th, 2022, and this mandate is accord on a five committee, the Committee on Reformatory Institution, the Committee on Justice, the Committee on Interior, the Committee on Human Rights, and the Committee of Police. And uh, we have visited Kujé prison, we have seen things by ourselves, and uh, it is our duty now to go and look into our various view to make sure such a thing will not happen again. So far, many inmates have been recaptured, including some members of the Boko Haram syndicate living many at large while four died during the attack. So far, 384 inmates were recaptured, including some members of the Boko Haram suspect, leaving a total of 502 inmates at large. Members therefore stress the need for proper correctional audit of Goji Medium Security Custodial Center, justice funding, and improvement in area of information technology are germane. My welfare is very paramount because they are at the center stage of the danger. And this is the time we should have life insurance for our officers and men. We, at the same time, are very concerned about petty crimes that are not meant to be custodial, but those petty offenders end up staying in correctional facilities for so long and they become added criminals. It's meant to be correctional. Whatever we can do to make sure they have more reimbursed budget, we'll do The member representing Olo Osu, Oru East Federal Constituency of Imo State, Kanis Mwachuku, has been speaking on the priority issues in the ongoing constitution review at the House of Representatives. And Mwachuku says state policing, in particular, is long overdue. It is timely. It is strategic because Insecurity is what the whole world is suffering now. And Nigeria is not exempted. And our own case is the worst. We tried uh, the old order. It worked because uh, then we never had internet. But now, this is a modern world. This is 21st century. We have to key into what is uh, obtainable in order advanced countries for us to get it right. You cannot, I'm from all the local government, you cannot bring somebody from Gombe, for instance, and ask him to come and uh, begin to police my village at Okorolo. He doesn't know our cultural arrangement. He doesn't know our cultural values. He doesn't know our way of life. He doesn't know anybody. But when we have recruited people from Oporolo in Imo State 
for them to police us. They know all the nooks and crannies of Oporol in Imo State. And they know everybody in Oporol. And when there is a stranger, or when we have strangers, they will spot it. And they would want to know their mission, who are there, what are their intentions of coming into Borol. And when they have sensed things that are not going normal, they will alert people of Borol in Imo State. And they begin to ask questions. Why are you here? What is your mission here? And when they have confirmed that uh, the movement is not good, it is not going to be palatable, it's not going to add value, it's not going to create value, of course, automatically they must react towards making sure that uh, such an uh, uh, arrangement is quelled or quashed. Uh, or repelled. So, state policing is the best thing that will happen. We have our brothers and sisters that are living, they live abroad. They don't live here. But they are Nigerians. They have right to vote especially when they are above 18 years. I would want it to be part and parcel of the new order. Secondly, people may have, people, if you look at yourself that you are a popular person, and if you stand alone because of your popularity, your people will come out in mass and vote you because of your antecedents. Let it be enshrined in this new order. Independent candidate, if it is enshrined and equally stipulated in this uh, uh, new electoral act, I think it is going to add uh, value so that people will always try their popularity. Even if we did not achieve it today, someday we are going to achieve that. Because when you talk about local government, what you are talking about is uh, grassroots. And uh, all of us are from local government. Whether you are the president, whether you are the governor, whether you are a minister, whether you are a federal house member, whether you are a senator, you have your village. And... Um, through your village, you have your local government before you talk of uh, state. If we have completely addressed issues of local government and wards properly and perfectly, to a reasonable extent, this issue of insecurity and uh, all kinds of uh, problems, uh, social menace we have, we become uh, history, or to, to, to a reasonable extent, it will drop to the uh, 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 minimal, uh, uh, minimal. What am I talking about? If they have finally gotten their autonomy, a lot of funds will be sent to the local government. In Nigeria, we have 774 local governments. Moment all these funds are located there or sent directly to their coffers, a lot of projects will see the light of the day. And the rural dwellers will thrive. Enjoyment, happiness will begin to exist there. And they, there will be buoyant of our economy in all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria. 
It is very, very important that that is achieved. Two of them are okay, but uh, the one we are practicing, the presidential system of government is good. All we need to do is uh, for us to make sure that uh, all the provisions used to garnish it must be implemented from beginning till end. That is what is obtainable in the United States of America. And they are doing very, very well. If you did not do well by using your bicycle to your marketplace or to your church or to your school, if you are given even a helicopter, you will not do well. So what we should do is we'll look at ourselves and ask our, each other, what are the things that are not allowing our own uh, presidential system to be a par or get close to what is obtainable in the United States of America? These are the things we should uh, talk about, not uh, changing from a uh, presidential system of uh, government and uh, governance to a uh, parliamentary system. I don't think that they are without, I don't think we have uh, much issue. All we need is just for us to sit back and look at it critically and objectively and say, these are the areas we should expunge, these are the areas we should add, and these are the things, these are the values you should uh, add, these are the values you should create. That is the way I look at it. You may be familiar with the everyday use of the term amendment. Now, while it has same general meaning, we are particularly interested in what it means in legislative parlance. Let's hear it from Chair of the House Committee on Rules and Business, Francis Waive. Amendment here in the, the legislature is a situation where a bill has been a, a proposed, even a motion, and uh, during the debate, another member feels that this is a beautiful piece of legislation, except that uh, this aspect of it needs to be corrected. In a motion, particularly the prayers, are what members concentrate on. What is the mover of the motion asking to be done? Uh, those are the prayers. So they look at the prayers one, two, three, and sometimes members will come and say, prayer one needs to be uh, so corrected, so amended in this format. It must be definite, must be clear, must be precise. And in some cases, uh, they bring in additional prayers. At the end of the day, you find that the motion as originally uh, presented by the sponsor has now changed uh, the final uh, outcome that is uh, going to come out uh, at the end after the question has been put will now be slightly different from what was originally proposed. So that correction that took place is the amendment. So honorable members who are present have the privilege to propose amendments to uh, motions, particularly the prayers of the motions, and then for bills, the same thing. And, uh, but many times for the bills, by the time they go for public hearing, more amendments take place where the civil society, stakeholders, they bring in their inputs. So it's not the original thing that the sponsor had proposed that now comes out as the bill, such that lawmaking is a process where everybody that the law is going to affect, you know, has a, uh, the right to air his opinion, to make contributions to the making of that law.
And that's been you and your reps. Many thanks for watching. I am Victor, as well. I'll see you next time.